Hi, my name is Andy Hawker. I love things that go fast. I'm hoping that we can have some fun together. So join me as a fellow disciple of speed. Hello and welcome Disciples of Speed and welcome to another episode where we look at my car collection and look at some specific uh, cars and makes in the collection. Uh, today I want to focus on Corgi, Corgi cars, um, and tell a little bit of the history and then we'll look at cars. Uh, in 1933, a company called Met Toy was, was formed and what that stood for was Metal Toy. Uh, it was started by a man by the name of Philip Ullman. Philip Ullman, in Northampton, England. Um, Ullman was, had previously had a toy company where he made toys in Germany, but he left Germany and he emigrated to England. Um, later, Ullman was joined by Arthur Katz. Now, Arthur Katz was somebody that actually worked with Ullman in Germany, so they knew each other. And they decided to produce a line of pressed tin cars um, to compete directly against Meccano's toys, which was dinky toys. So Dinky predated Corgi in the press metal cars. Dinky Toys was owned by Frank Hornby, um, and uh, they began making uh, their 10 press cars in 1934. Now, Corgi began manufacturing uh, die-cast cars in 1956, and this was to compete directly with Lesney and the Matchbox cars that we've looked at a little bit before. Um, the name Corgi was chosen because their, their factory was in, uh, Swansea, Wales, and a Corgi dog is a Welsh breed, and it also represents the royal family, and it's a small name, kind of, to join in with the small cars that they made. But also something easy to remember. Uh, in the 1960, uh, Corgi produces the Aston Martin DB5, which is from the James Bond movie Goldfinger. Uh, this toy was packed with all kinds of really cool details, right? Uh, including a, it had pop-out machine guns. It had the rear bulletproof shield that would pop up. A uh, fun, functioning ejector seat, which would shoot the passenger out of the roof. Um, and this one die cast car, this Aston Martin DB5 from the James Bond movie, goes on to become the best-selling die-cast car of all time. Um, in 1983, Corgi went into liquidation. Uh, a buyout and reorganization created Corgi Toys Limited. Um, however, this only lasted four years, and unfortunately in 1989, the brand was sold, but it was sold to Mattel. So once again, though, in 1995... Uh, Corgi became an independent company as Corgi Classics Limited. Um, following the trend, though, uh, the, the brand was once again acquired in 2008 by Hornby. You remember Hornby was Frank Hornby of Meccano Dinky Toys. So um, the cars uh, were primarily made in 143rd scale. And in 1957, uh, introduced they introduced Corgi Major Toys, which um, was on a slightly larger scale and 132nd scale, roughly. Uh, but they specialized in several series of cars. It was circus vehicles, competition vehicles, film and, and, and television, emergency vehicles, commercial, agriculture, uh, military, and the like. Um, but while they were under the uh, ownership of Mattel, they also began to produce 164 scale cars. They made Corgi Jr. and they made the Corgi Whiz Wheels. And I have several Corgis of different sizes in my collection and I wanna share those with you now. Okay, I wanna get started with uh, some of the Corgi race cars actually. Um, this is a Yardley McLaren. Um, Yardley McLaren Ford M19A. Uh, this is in pretty good shape for, for a used car. You know, not, not too bad. The A uh, little bit of paint chips. Um, but I, I love the Formula One and the Indy cars and all of the open wheel racing cars. I love all kinds of race cars. All kinds of cars in general. But uh, that's the Yardley. Uh, next, I've got, this is a Whiz Wheels. Um, and this one is the Surtees T3. 
TS9 Formula One car. Um, and this one is uh, pretty good condition, not, not too bad for the age. You can see that it's missing some of the nose sticker here, uh, number 16. And uh, the rest of the stickers are in pretty good shape. Uh, they're there anyway. Um, so that's a fun car. I'm gonna set that one right here because the next one is also a Surtees TS9 F1. And as you can see, these are uh, under the whiz wheels um, name, but this one is a little different. It's car number one. And here, the number one sticker is on the nose, uh, as opposed to this number one sticker, of course, was, or the number 16 sticker, I should say, is up here closer to the driver. So very similar, uh, different um, sponsors, uh, a little different color, but same car. Great condition. This one, this one's really pretty good. Next, this is one of my newer ones and one of my favorites. This is the the Hesketh Ford 308. And what's great about this car, uh, if you ever see the movie Rush, uh, about um, James Hunt. There's the name James right there. James Hunt uh, raced for Lord Hesketh. They went Formula One racing and uh, had some success, but um, his rivalry is depicted with uh, um, Nikki Lauda in the movie. And they were actually pretty good friends, really. The, the movie takes uh, takes a, a lot of liberties there with their relationship. But the Hesketh is a great car. Um, again, they didn't have any sponsors. Um, they didn't want sponsors. And as it turns out, you can't last very long without sponsors because there's a lot of money that it takes to run a Formula One team. Um, this Corgi here is the Shadow Ford. And uh, this one's really kind of nice. It's It's got the driver on here, Jackie Oliver. And um, it's in pretty good condition. Um, you can see the uh, stickers and the driver. Um, I'm really glad that it's got uh, you know the number on it. It's got the name of the driver. That's that's a big plus. The next one is also a Shadow Ford, as you can see, and um, it's the same car, but it's a different number. This one is driven by Graham Hill, and you can see Graham Hill here on the side, and of course. Uh, Graham Hill was a great race car driver. So, um, the two shadows. So, next I'm going to move to a smaller um, Corgi car. This one's a lot of fun. This one was designed to steer by tilting the driver. You can see the wheels turning by tilting the driver. And, uh, of course, when the wheels turned inward, the driver leaned inward and conversely. Uh, a lot of fun. That's a neat little car. Nope, I keep dropping it. Got to be careful. Number three, um, and in really pretty good condition. I've, I find my cars, you know, in typically in uh, secondhand stores, antique stores, that kind of thing. So I'm really excited when I can find them in pretty good condition. Um, here is a car that is Corgi Classics. So this was a little bit kind of after the same mold as the uh, models of yesteryear by Matchbox, by Lesney. But uh, this is a great model. It's a, it's a Rolls Royce. And um, it's, um, it's, it's just a really good condition. I'm real happy with this one when I found it. I was very, very pleased. Um, got the spare tire on the roof. So pretty good. I'm, and I'm really surprised that the, uh, that the hood ornament is still there because those uh, typically would get snapped right off. You can see that there's a there's a crack in the glass right there in the windows, but other than that, just really really good condition. Now this car here is a lot of fun. So this is a, this is an older one. This is Corgi Toys, and this is a Rover 2000 TC. But what's fun about this car is that in the in the on the boot here, there's a spare tire. As you can see, this tire comes out and there's these little levers underneath here and you can pull one lever down and that tire, that wheel will come right off. And the car simulates being jacked up with that lever down. And you can put the spare tire on, put it on there, press it on, hold it in place, roll down the lever and you're good to go again. I didn't get that on very square, 
but you get the idea. And um, what I really like is that uh, it makes it realistic. Now these four that are on here are the original wheels with this car. This is an aftermarket spare because the spare was gone. As you can imagine, kids playing with their cars and immediately you know, lose the little pieces that are associated with it. But I was able to get an aftermarket one uh, from one of the companies that does um, restoring parts for old cars like these. And you can see the, the jeweled headlights to simulate uh, the, the lights. This car is kind of fun. This is a newer one. It's a minibus, Corgi minibus, intercity minibus. But it's a, you can see that it's a futuristic design with a door in the back. Uh, it's really in pretty darn good shape. Um, I like that one a lot as well. <clears throat> now here's one that's a little bit older. This is a 1959 uh, Chevy um, based on a uh, probably a sedan delivery. But this is the Kennel Club car, and you can see down here it says um, Chevy Impala right there. And uh, if, I don't know if you can see, but as you move the car, the little dog, the wiener dog there, the dachshund, looks like he's walking. And then uh, you've got these slides where you have places for the dogs. Now these are not the original dogs that came with the car. They are long gone, but I was able to come up with some, some little dogs um, to kind of take the place. Great little car. Um, I was pretty excited when I found that one. This is also a newer Corgi. This is the BMW M1. And as you can see, it's quite a bit newer, but uh, everything looks in great condition here. The stickers are all very good. Uh, the back opens up to reveal the engine. And, uh, you know, it's an inline six cylinder, just a great, great looking car. Um, yeah, BMW M1, love it. Now, one of the things that uh, Corgi absolutely loved is their Rolls Royce and Bentley models. This happens to be a Bentley. Uh, the hood opens on either side to reveal the engine. The trunk opens, uh, the boot. And then the, uh, the back seat, you can kind of see here that it is up. But if I open the trunk and I have something, a long package, I can put the seat down and then I can put something along in there, just like it would have been in the actual car. And that's pretty fun. So that is the, is the Bentley. Now, Along with that, this is the Rolls-Royce Silver Dawn. And it's basically, as you can see, basically the same car. One's a Bentley, one's a Rolls-Royce. Rolls-Royce just happens to have the top down. The seats fold forward, as does the back seat drop down, like we said before. So, um, and likewise, the, uh, the hood opens to reveal the engine, and the trunk opens, and then you can put a long package in there as well um, you can see the difference in these two cars they're they're very similar um, i will tell you that um, my thinking is they're probably about the same age uh, however this has a metal base so this is probably an older one whereas the rolls royce being plastic is a newer model and uh, but both both really great looking cars now sticking with rolls royce here's another Rolls-Royce. This is, of course, the uh, Rolls-Royce Corniche. So um, this car is also quite nice. The, the hood opens, the trunk opens, and the doors open, and the seats also move forward. So very good condition. This one, um, I got this, bought this from an antique store. Um, a woman, her name was Linda. Her husband was a collector, not unlike me. And he had passed away and she was selling his cars and she was selling them at very, very reasonable prices. I bought several pieces from her husband's collection and it was really a joy to get to get to have some of them. We're going to stick with uh, kind of the luxury cars. This is the Corgi Mercedes Benz 240D and uh, the hood does not open, but the trunk does. We've got a tow hook here and then, uh, of course, the doors open. This one's in very good condition. 
I actually have two of these, so uh, they're, they're both they're both quite nice. Um, coming back to the Rolls Royce Silver Shadow, um, and this is um, the hood ornament on this one did snap off at some point, unfortunately. But the hood opens, the trunk opens, and the doors open. So and the seats fold forward. So. You know, just a lot of detail. Corgi was really great at, at doing a lot of the detail. The jeweled headlights again, if you can see those. And uh, so very, very fun. Um, next is the Jaguar XK120. Um, this car is in very good condition. The, uh, the hood opens. This little strap pops up to allow you to open the hood. Uh, the trunk opens as well, and uh, just a nice car. The stickers are intact, uh, great condition. This was another one from Linda's husband's collection, and uh, I was very glad to, to be able to get that as well. Here we have a, a uh, London Transport. So it's just, you know, Routemaster. So, you know, it's your double-decker bus, right? This one's been pretty well played with. It's got some wear to it. Um, again, picked this up in a in a uh, an antique store, but the stickers are all in really pretty good condition, so it's real happy with this find. Nice little bus. Um, here we have another example of, of a little bigger car. This is the Ford Escort 55, and uh, this is a, a Royal Mail vehicle. A little rough, got a little bit of paint chips on it, but not not terribly bad. The back doors, the rear doors open. Um, they only have one hinge point down low, so you have to be pretty careful not to not to break them and, and destroy them in any way, but, um, but a great little car. Uh, and it's a fun one that's a little hard to find. I hadn't found that before, so it was great. Great one to see. I got a couple of these guys. These are uh, the Lotus Elite. Um, no opening. These are little newer cars, uh, but the doors open, but no, not the hood or the hatch. And it also has a tow hook on it, but it's in very good condition. Um, the, the two that I have are both in real good condition. So um, I'm pretty happy with those as well. Now, um, here is the Vigilant Range Rover. So this is a police vehicle, as you can see. Um, great little, great little Rover. The, the back hatch opens up, the tailgate drops down. Um, it is missing a um, speaker here. It's got a loudspeaker, I believe, right there. It's missing that. It's got the spotlight on it, though. And uh, not, not too bad. Pretty good condition. And uh, again, another nice little model. Now, this one is fun. This one is the Bertoni Runabout Barchetta. Um, so they made this in this little larger scale, and then they also made it in the 164 scale. Um, but this is a, uh, a great little find here. Uh, a lot of times the windshield will be broken. Um, you can see the jeweled rear taillights and just a fun car. Uh, and on the side sticker here, it says runabout. Missing the sticker over here, but right here it says runabout. Uh, love that car. Very, very nice. Here is a um, Corgi Aston Martin DB4. Now, um, this, is, this is a great little car as well. This is a little bit older. The hood on this car does open. And uh, now it's supposed to. There we go, there we go, it opened. And you can just see that that's really all that happens here is the hood opens. But the DB4 was obviously a very classic style car and uh, later went on to star in the movie Goldfinger, right? Goldfinger. Now this is the DB5, which was the next iteration, but this is the one that Corgi made to, um, for, from the movie. And so um, you push this little lever right here and you can see that the machine guns would pop out. Um, there's a little place back here on the taillights, you push that and the bulletproof uh, shield pops up. And lastly, if you push this lever down here, it <laughs> is supposed to eject the passenger, but it's not working very well for some reason. Um, but the passenger would come shooting out. Um, yeah, it's worked in the past. I don't know what's going on with it. But in any event, so this one here, though, 
Um, as I mentioned in my introduction, the DB5 from the movie Goldfinger is the um, top selling die cast car of all time, all makes worldwide. This is the one that has topped the charts. This car is not one of the originals. It's a, they produced it later, again, uh, just because it was so popular. So this is one of the later ones that I was able to pick up. And uh, so it's a, a really fun. The, the Aston Martins are just gorgeous. This car is really a lot of fun. This is a, uh, an Oldsmobile Tornado. Uh, you can see it also has a tail hook. Um, nothing opens on this car, but except that there's a little wheel right here, if you can see that, right here on the, on the front fender. And if you roll that wheel forward, the headlights pop up. And you can see it's got the jeweled headlights. So that's kind of a neat, fun feature. Um, it's one of those things that, you know, if you don't notice it at first, you don't, you don't realize that it doesn't. But uh, a lot of fun. That's, that's a great looking little car. Pretty darn good shape. Got a little scratches across the roof here. Now this little van is a lot of fun. This is called Smith's Carrier Van. It's, it's a cantina van. So what happens is this little door pops down and inside you see the server and the cook. And there's a little rotator on here and you can, you can make the cook, you know, swing around and place stuff on the stove and serve. And it's a cool little car. So I really enjoy this one. This is a little bit of an older one. I'm not sure what year it is. I've had a little trouble uh, identifying Corgi years, but I do have a listing of Corgis so I can tell what number they were in the manufacturing order, but a little tough time finding the, the, um, the actual years, but still working on that. Part of the fun of the hobby, of course, is all the research. This little truck is a, um, it's ERF. Model 64. It's a little. It's a little waste truck, um, and you can see it says tunnel cement, um, and, and maybe the concrete would go in here, and they'd pour it out the back because the back comes up. I'm not really sure exactly what this car would or this little truck would do, but it is missing one of the covers on the filler. I don't know that this is original equipment here. That looks like just a cap uh, where you would uh, oil bearings on a piece of machinery. But uh, in any event, this one's kind of rough. Um, I, I found this one in an antique store and the price was, was really reasonable. So I picked it up, I didn't have one and hopefully find one maybe someday in better shape, but, but this is really fun, I like that. Now, as I mentioned in the uh, intro, you know, one of the things that Corgi likes to do is make cars uh, based on television and movies. So here is, these are newer Corgi and uh, this is, uh, a Batmobile, one of the one of the versions of the Batmobile, and you can see that the that it slides open so that you can see uh, our Batman can get in and out. Um, neat little neat little Batmobile there. This is another Bat Batmobile by Corgi, and uh, and you can see that this one is from the 1950s. Now this model was not made in the 1950s. These two happen to belong to my brother, and they were part of his collection, and uh, so. This one opens up in the back, so you can see inside there. And it says lab results, <laughs> that's kind of fun. But it's also, uh, you know, access to the cockpit from there, as well as the side doors. But a big canopy uh, kind of makes it makes these side doors seem a, little, seem a little useless. And then we have another version of the Batmobile, 1960 version. And there again, you can see that it's, it's just um, Batman and no Robin. Now the, if I can remember how this works, it's got a little blade that pops out. There it is. So you can see this little blade that pops out. So the Batman can cut through like a fence wire or something like that to get away. And then you just pop that back in like that. And the button for that is right here. And it pops out. So that's pretty fun. Corgi was really good at making uh, fun little either openings or gadgets, that kind of thing. Um, this is a, a smaller Corgi that uh, Corgi Juniors, a Mercedes Benz bus. And this was also part of Linda's husband's collection, but in great condition. And I have a bunch more of the small uh, Corgis. And before I get too much into them, I'll bring this one over. This is, of course, a newer version, but it's a Corgi. Um, 
the Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. So from, from the movie Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, the, the wings of course go down. These can pop off, but really you want to leave them on, right? You don't want to lose them. So anyway, cool. Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, a lot of fun. Coming back to the Batman theme, this is an old version of the Batmobile from the 60s television show. This one's pretty darn rough. You can see it's a little beat up. One of the wheels is missing. It's got the metal base. Part of the canopy is missing. There's uh, Batman and Robin. They're in pretty rough shape. But, uh, but again, it is an older one. You can tell by the wheels. And then I have a newer version, which is just Batman in the cockpit, no Robin. A little, much better condition. It's got a, got a different type of tow hook here. And it's got a plastic base and uh, with these, with these uh, newer style wheels. So um, a couple of Batmobiles. This is a horse trailer. Now the horse trailer is a Corgi Junior. And uh, it's called the Rice Horse Box. And in England, everything was a horse box, whether it was a truck or a trailer. Uh, the tailgate comes down and it is a little tricky because you gotta lift it up and then bring it down. And there are two horses in the back, as you can see. Those are not original horses. Those are some aftermarket horses that I was able to come up with. But a little horse trailer. Here we have a, another Whiz Wheels, Corgi Junior's Whiz Wheels, Porsche 917. Pretty good shape, nice little car. I like it. I love race cars, obviously. And then next we have, this is a Corgi Whiz Wheels as well, uh, Corgi Juniors, Marcos XP. So it's an experimental prototype car. Uh, pretty good, pretty good shape. Uh, we have kind of a funky ambulance here. This is the uh, Healer Wheeler. So this is a newer model as well, plastic base, uh, futuristic ambulance, kind of a fun, cool car. This one is uh, in really good condition. It's an Austin Healey Le Mans Sprite. Um, and it is a Whiz Wheels. You can see that the paint is perfect. The stickers are perfect. Also part of Linda's husband's collection. As is this car. This is a Corgi Junior Jaguar XJ6. And another beautiful car in uh, great condition. The trunk does open on this guy. And it has a tow hook but paint is perfect, just beautiful shape. This one is a Corgi Junior. It is the Jensen Interceptor. What's kind of cool about this car, of course the, the doors open, but there were three cars about this same period of time that had very similar looks. And uh, one was the Studebaker Avanti. Um, and the other one was, and it's escaping me, I'll have to think of it later. But, um, but they were just a great looking design for the time with the sleek back, uh, the wide C pillar, and uh, just a good looking car. And next we've got a Mercedes 280 SL. And again, the doors open on this guy. And this is a left-hand drive. So this would have been one that uh, you'd have driven in the, in the United States, perhaps. Um, my grand, or not my grandfather, my, my father-in-law, had one of these when I uh, married my wife. Uh, beautiful, beautiful car. Here's the Gullwing Mercedes Benz 300 SL. And of course the doors open on this guy. So another great little car. This one's in very, very good condition. Uh, sometimes these doors could break off. And so very happy that I have those. Then we have the Corgi Juniors Hot Rodder. And this is just a special design I think that the Corgi did and it's a it's a fun looking little car. Uh, the Lotus Europa here we go uh, another Whiz Wheels Corgi Jr and this is in fantastic condition the back does open to reveal the engine and the trunk space and uh, this one's in perfect shape um, just missing the British flag on this side has it over there. I've got this little little uh, camper van here, Wigwam Van Camper, it says. And this is another futuristic uh, futuristic looking vehicle. So here's the driver's cockpit up here. You can see where the door would be. Here's the rear door for the, for the camper. And you can kind of see inside there, there's a, a table and some chairs and a lounge area. Uh, just a fun little, little car. 
Um, love that as well. The last one that I want to show you is it's a Corgi Major. Um, so Corgi Major toys. This is the Snorkel fire engine. And when I turned it over, I dumped out the fireman who runs the snorkel. And you can see that there are three firemen in the back here of the cab. And this little guy is in fantastic shape. I was really, really excited when I found this. Here's what's neat. You got these two little knobs right here. But before you run up those knobs, when, when you pull up to a fire, of course, you got to put out your uh, your feet to keep the the uh, fire truck from tipping over when you raise the boom. So we have these outrigger stands. Bring those out, and now you've got these two little handles here, and you turn them, and it raises up the snorkel. And then you raise this one. There we go, it's ready to turn it the wrong way, so raise it up, turn it, raise it up, and as you're raising it, it has this bar right here that keeps the basket at the right angle to spray the fire. So it's just a really, really fun, fun vehicle. Um, they just did such a nice job with it, and uh, we're, of course, you can turn it around out the fire and once that fires out bring it on down pull in your your feet and everybody can go back to the fire station everything's safe again so a, a really really good looking truck in, in great condition uh, the paint is in excellent condition and again uh, the Simon snorkel very happy with this um, so that is the the majority of my Corgi models that I've got. I hope you enjoyed seeing those. Corgi did so many amazing cars that are um, um, have all kinds of moving features and different things on them. So uh, I hope to find more of them to add to my collection. And uh, I hope you do as well. So happy hunting. Thank you again.